God's Word cancels negative self-talk. When we're tempted to become our own worst critic, we must remember what He says about us. Today on Better Together, Joyce Meyer, Nicole C., Natalie Grant, and Alex Celia are joining us. Come on, because we need to talk about how to renew our minds with God's love, His hope, and His truth. I know a lot of times we're plagued by negative self-talk. You know, and sometimes we hear things in our head about ourselves and sometimes we are tempted to believe it. Um, I remember hearing uh, an outer voice that would tell me often. I remember, like I said, I was in a past relationship and and, uh, he would say often to me, you know, Nicole, what is your purpose in life? That's your problem. You have no purpose. And I remembered hearing that going inside and I remember having that decision that I would have to make. Am I going to receive the lie as truth, mm. or am I going to believe what God says as truth? And I remember back then I didn't have the courage to really say anything out loud. I didn't have, I didn't have the boldness to say, you know, you can't tell me I don't believe you. But I remember being stubborn on the inside, and I'd say, that's not true. That's not true. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's not true. I have a purpose. God has made me with a purpose. I remember on the inside, like, deciding in that moment what I was going to let incubate inside of me. Yeah. And so I believe we still have a choice. We can either believe the truth of what God says, or we can take what is true yeah. and believe that is truth. But they're not always the same. Right. And so I, I believe also that the more we are, or the more we get to know Christ, the more that we get to know the truth, then the more we see a reflection of who we really are. And we're able to say, no, that doesn't measure up to the image that he has made me into or that he's making me into, so I won't receive that. And so um, I think we all have an obligation. We all have uh, that decision that we have to make to say, okay, God, like at the end of the day, am I gonna believe you or am I going to believe me? And it comes down to who do I choose to believe? And so I don't know if y'all have ever had that negative self discussion on the inside of you. Oh, no, we you know what I'm saying? The war, <laughs> you know? But what do you tell yourselves? You know, how do you get yourselves through it? Get well, I love that it? you said when, when we hear God's truth, it says the truth shall yes. set you free. free. Yeah. yeah. So anything that puts you in bondage is that negative self-talk. Yes. First of all, you don't know that you have negative self-talk till your mind is renewed by the word. Wow. Mm. So true. That's when you start. Yep. Yes. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know that I could cast down wrong thoughts. Yeah. 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 I didn't know I had any any control mm. over my thoughts. I just yeah. thought whatever I thought, I thought, and that mm-hmm. was reality. But yes. I, I do remember coming to a place, and I, I preach this, you have to decide if you're going to believe, if you're going to let your emotions be your God. Yep. Yes. yes. Or if you're going to let good. the Word of God. Yes. That's right. Are you, are you going to believe how you feel? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to believe what the Word says? Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. Are you going to believe what you think? Are you going to believe what others tell you? Yes. Are you going to believe the Word of God? And so yes. the Word of God has to become our holy standard. Yes. That's right. And even if I don't mm-hmm. understand everything nope. yeah. in here, it's still true. That's, That's right. right. And we we have to... We, this, this is our guiding light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we... You got to find some place to put your faith, yes. and so you got to put it in this. Yes. Right. And even though I don't understand what's going on in my life right now, I don't understand why this isn't going away. You know, there's. Yes. I know you love me, God. I don't understand these things, but I believe your word. Yeah. yeah. And when you do that, then you can start getting rid of all that ugly self-talk. There's nothing worse mm-hmm. than negative self-talk. That's yeah. right. Yes. Because if you if you don't believe good things about yourself. That's it. You're never going to yeah. be convinced by anybody yeah. else. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, Scripture says, as we know, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments. Mm-hmm. Most of our thoughts are arguments mm-hmm. with right. what yes. the truth is and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge, knowledge of God. God. Yes. And we take captive mm-hmm. every thought to yeah. make it obedient to Christ. Yeah. Right. And we'll be ready to punish every act of disobedience, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's like, taking every thought mm-hmm. captive. Yeah. I never understood how to do that as a, as a young person. Because my thoughts every time, it was even when I was getting ready, because obviously that was my self-hate was, you know, <laughs> blaring in the mirror. Self-negative talk, I can't do this. I'm, you're stupid. My, you know, my whole life I was told I was stupid. You can't do anything stupid. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm stupid. And so when you tell me I can't, I can't. And so having to, and I love what you said, Joyce, that you don't know it's negative until 
the Word mm-hmm. of God is renewing your mind. Yeah. I mean, that is perfectly put because I think a lot of people are like, well, what is the truth? Yeah. You have to know the truth right. for it to set you free. But then the renewing of the mind comes by taking those thoughts captive mm-hmm. and making them obedient to Christ. What does Christ say about that? Mm-hmm. That's what I have to yeah. do because before I used to just let the thoughts wander. Yes. Mm-hmm. They, they had nowhere to go, yeah. but I had to replace error with truth. Yeah. One of the ways I fight that negative self-talk, and I started this back when I was in college, and I was engaged to somebody I shouldn't be, and I was had bulimia and just a mess, and I had so much negative self-talk, and so it might sound like such an elementary thing to do, um, but I started reading the Word of God out loud. Yep. Yeah, where exactly. was it wasn't yeah. this thing that I was just reading it, but I was reading it out loud, and then I started memorizing it because right. I'd read the same thing and over again. So I'd start walking and right. saying it out loud. And then, yeah. and you know, what's funny is you might feel ridiculous when you're doing it at first, um, but one of the ways to just, when you have the thought and the thing, you, you can't think of something else when your mouth is going. Exactly so right. when your mouth is going yeah. and saying the word of God, it automatically Canceling is going to cancel yeah. out the thoughts that are in your mind. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, after you start doing it over and over and over again, it's going to start spilling out That's of right, you Natalie. because it's in there. And just the other day, I've got one daughter in particular that struggles with some negative self-talk. And I thought she was on the phone. I said, who are you talking to? And she said, I was reading the word out loud. And I was like, (laughs) because she started to realize, well, wait a second. You're right. I got to start saying this thing out loud because I don't believe it right now. I don't feel it right now, but I need to shut up the thoughts that are going in my my mind. So I'm going to open my mouth and begin to read the word of God out loud. And I think you know, if you're watching right now, you haven't tried that, try it. Right. <laughs> try it. You might feel funny. Your family might look at you funny. But I'm telling you, mm-hmm. reading the Word of God out loud is, okay. is kind of literally thing. Confessing the Word of God is probably one of the number one things that is God has used to set me free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And He taught me how to do this before I ever heard a message on it mm-hmm. at all. I was so negative, and God started dealing with me about not being negative. Yes. So I really tried for like six months. I thought I really tried to be positive, but I still wasn't seeing many changes. And so I said to the Lord, okay, I've been trying to do what you told me to do. I'm not being negative. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying negative things. (laughs) But then I heard the Lord say, but you're not saying anything positive yet either. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I I stopped doing the wrong thing, but I didn't start doing the right thing. Yeah, there you go. And he had me do my homework, and I made a list of 60 confessions mm-hmm. that were all, I had scripture to back every one of them up. Yeah. Yes. Not one of the things that I said was a re, was true in my life mm-hmm. right then, it's but it was truth. the truth of God's wow. word. Wow. Wow. And, I could, and twice thing. a day, mm-hmm. every on. day, yep. I would say those out loud, and I can tell you every single thing on that list yep. is a reality in my Come life on. right now. <laughs> it's miraculous mm-hmm. when yes. I think about it because yep. like, I was so hungry to preach the word and I had never had a speaking engagement and I so I wanted somebody to call me and ask mm. me to come teach their Bible study or come preach at their church. And so I started saying, every day I get speaking engagements by mail, by phone, and in person. Well, of course now, you know, we can't, <laughs> can't, can't stop it. turn yeah. down yeah. So, yeah. so many things yeah. we can't yeah. even take. Yeah. But it, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I would confess, I love people and people love me and Hardly anybody could stand me then because I was so obnoxious. <laughs> anybody who knows how to worry knows how to meditate. Come on. Mm, oh my goodness. It is so funny yes. because we've made this thing, I don't know, especially, you know, my pastor sitting here, but people get a little bit wary of, oh, that's just the power of positive thinking. Right. Like, oh, that's just, that's like a self-talk, like power. Po-. You're like, no, actually, when you get down to it, the power of positive thinking is, yeah, thank you. Is the word. on the word I'm day an and night. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah, me. I'm right. fearfully and wonderfully yeah. made. And all of a sudden you're like, But Wait. there's declaration yes. in our words yes. and it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. So God, we yes. are made in his image. Yes. He spoke things into being. Right. Mm-hmm. We yes. speak things into being as well. We serve a God who yes. calls things that be That's not right. as if they already yes. exist. That's right. right. Romans 4, 18. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and I love that God called out people and he changed their names, he changed their identity. Yeah. Once they believed in that identity mm-hmm. that yeah. they were in Christ, they wouldn't change the world. That's you know, think right. about yeah. Gideon. Yes. Yeah. You know, Gideon like in the army and he was so afraid, you know. <laughs> so it changes the way we think and then it changes the way we live when yeah. we live in the identity of Christ, who he says we are. And so that meditation, that 
giving thanks that I am fearfully and wonderfully yes. made. I am the righteousness of God. I am a new cre creation in Christ mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I need that every day. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Yes. Everything the Bible is says that today. angels hearken to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we want angels to work for us, yeah. if we confess the Word of God out loud, yes. then they will be able to do so much more in our lives. Mm -hmm. When you speak, mm -hmm. You eat those words. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And good or bad. They become part of yes. you. So yes. when you when you declare things out loud, and David said all the time, I declare. Yes. I, you know, I, yes. When he said, "This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad." I don't think it was because he felt that so like great that day. Yeah. yeah. I think he was making a declaration about how he would yes. live yeah. that day. Hundred percent. And so, if you really think about it. It is one of the most powerful yeah, things. It is the word you you actually referenced this scripture, Alex, from Hebrews four twelve that says, "For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow." And that's the thing I think we forget. It isn't just like you're just saying some mantra mm -hmm. over right. and over. That's mm -hmm. just some and empty it words. Keeps saying, this thing and it judges the attitudes of your heart. Yes, and right. it, exactly, that. it exposes it, that. our innermost thoughts yeah. and desires. That's what it does. And so right. that's yes. why it's so powerful. Yes, alive and active. Mm. That's why I try to tell people the word is not just like we talk. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. The word got inherent power in it. Mm -hmm. yes. Back by heaven. You, I can preach and watch people change. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. I can yes. watch the word yes. change them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, why would people crowd into a building to sit there for a whole weekend to listen to somebody talk? Mm. Exactly. They wouldn't if it wasn't the Word of God That's because right. that Word That's right. changes people. That's right. Yes, it, does. it renews their mind. It gives them hope. It changes people. Yes. And confessing, listening to somebody else is great. Mm -hmm. But when you start confessing right. that Word out loud yourself, mm -hmm. yes. and you don't have to do it in front of people. Just oh, exactly. just. Take 10 things that the Bible says is a reality that are not true in your life yep. and write them down and start yes. confessing them out loud two, three, four times a day. Yes. And you see what happens in a few you months. Post it in your yeah. car. Yeah. So yeah. when you're driving by yourself, yeah. you're just, it's right there in front of you and you're just confessing them while you drive. It, rene you know? it helps renew yes. your mind. Yep. It's one yes. of the big things that renews your mind. Yep. When I had that tumor in my stomach last year, yes. I had a stomach tumor and, uh, and my friend who's a, godly man and he's a health guru person. He gave me this scripture and like de declarations of the word. I mean, it was so long. And he goes, Alex, I want you to read this like medication, morning and night. And every time you read this, you're, you're visualizing that tumor dissolve in Jesus' name. And I had a pastor actually say to me, because I preached when I got healed, mm -hmm. four months yes. later that tumour shrinks, mm -hmm. goes away, miracle. Well, I say what I was told, and I had a pastor come to me and said, oh, Pastor Alex, you shouldn't have said that about the prayer thing, because it makes it look like it's, you know, that's the method. Oh. And what about if, and I said, no, I was declaring yeah. the word <laughs> of God yeah. over that yeah. tumor yeah. and it disappeared. Yeah. There's, the, there's yeah. the result. I said, yeah. oh, that's not some hokey pokey weird thing. That's what he was doing was religion. What you were doing is true Christianity. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want to speak what's true as if it is the truth yeah. when it has no right. transforming power. Right. You know, like the Bible tells us in Romans 12, it says to be, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. And that's by the truth yes. of God's word. Right. And the death yeah. and life and the power of the tongue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You know, and speaking that word, you know, and, and a good thing from what you were talking about is the, the negative self-talk is sometimes I think I wouldn't say what I say to myself <laughs> yeah. to, to any else. other person yeah. on the planet. Yeah. Exactly. Or even thinking about somebody else. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that, I would never yeah. do that. So why yeah. in yeah. the world am I doing that to yeah. myself? Yeah. yeah. Because it's the devil putting those thoughts in your head. Yeah. And instead of rejecting them, you accept them as your own. That's and it. so that casting down. Yeah. yeah. We have Imagination. to know the difference. We have yeah. to know when Satan's talking to That's us. It. We really got to know our enemy. Yeah. Yes. And as much as we talk about the devil, 
I still don't think we recognize very good whenever he's after us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I had a friend of mine said to me once, Debbie Prescott, yes. um, she said to me, you know, people always say, I can't hear the voice of God. I can't hear the voice of God. And she says, how many negative things did you hear this morning while you were doing your makeup? And everyone's like, oh, one, two. She goes, oh, so you can hear the voice of the enemy loud right. and clear. Yeah. So wow. learn mm. to hear the voice of God because he's speaking to you more than the enemy, wow. but you're allowing the enemy to be the louder voice. And I remember that just shifting everything for me going, oh, my goodness, I've got to be aware of what the enemy is doing right. while I'm just in my Absolutely. thoughts. He's speaking. And so then I'm wondering, oh, why can't I hear the voice of God? Yeah. Right. And, and sometimes yes. it's not even that he's speaking, he's spoken. Mm. Yeah. The voice of yes. God is what he's already said. Yeah. It's the truth right. of what he's already declared for us. And so it's like that battle again. Who am I going to believe I'm in those moments? Yeah. And I, am I going to believe the things that I see in the mirror that I don't like? Mm. Or am I going to really believe that I am fearfully and wonderfully mm. made? Yeah. You know, those when are the When we really start actually made. believing that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The devil might as well just get out of town yeah, because he's going to have no power over you. Yeah. Here we come. I was, yeah, I was reading yesterday about Jesus in the wilderness. What made the enemy flee? It is, it is written. It is written. Exactly. It is written. Oh my gosh, he declared written. the word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it amazing that the enemy twisted yeah. part of scripture? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, actually, no, that's not no. actually how it goes. Yeah. So does who we turn to for affirmation, does it matter? Like in those moments, like, or Will is we it, turn to, oh, I think yeah. that's important. Does it matter? I think we can, when we've, my husband often <laughs> calls my magnifying mirror, the accuser of the brethren. <laughs> <mirror. laughs> that's good. Okay. We've you all know, heard, yeah, Right? Yeah, so we all it. have one. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. But I think we can turn to somebody and hear somebody say something that they didn't yes, really yes. mean. Yeah. yeah. And because we've been thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On negative thoughts, we yeah. just heard them say, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I didn't when they did that. not yeah. say, <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. I yeah. didn't even say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very true. You know, so when God called you, it wasn't a conference call. Ooh, Ooh. God good. called you mm. that's good. Himself, yeah. and He didn't ask anybody else yeah. how good. He made you. It wasn't a conference call. That's good. Yeah. And I love that, and Beautiful. and I think that sometimes, kind of, it doesn't matter even what the closest people. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have people in our homes that don't speak yeah. over us properly, Yeah, you know, and I think the importance of finding those people in your life, having a good church, having a good pastor, having yes. good friends, yeah. people that seed and are an yeah. asset into my life and going to conferences, going to church, going to, you know, hear the word of God yeah. um, is so important. Right. And that community of of listening to what God says about us. Yeah. So, so that we can yeah. learn yeah. what learn what he says mm -hmm. about us yeah. and who we are. There's a higher way. We can all do better. There is a beautiful standard written in the book of God. Yeah. And um, I just think that's super important. Well, and I think it's important too who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like I mean, obviously we talk about our friendship a lot, yeah. but you know, we were friends that we were praying, we were praying for a friend, mm -hmm. like, like we get to be to one another. And I think sometimes um, you can be in such toxic relationships and friendships. Um, and it doesn't mean that you just want to surround yourself with people that think you're awesome. Right. You want to surround yourself with people that tell you the truth. Right. And right. that means sometimes it's going to be a hard truth, yeah. but they're not doing it in a way so that they can tear you down or keep you small or, mm -hmm. but, and, and I think there's some people even watching right now that are going, oh, you know what? I need to get out of that friendship. Right. And you do. <laughs> yeah. You do actually. You need to stop feeling bad about cutting off some people in your life that are toxic mm -hmm. to your life and keeping you from being able to walk fully in the truth um, of who God is. Or if you're attracted to somebody because all they do is flatter you too, because yeah. flattery it's is so poison. empty. It and I is. think, isn't it funny how sometimes we get it feels so, even though we can say flattery is empty, it feels good when somebody flatters you. It feels good when somebody says to you how wonderful you are, how great you are. When we would just realize somebody's telling that to us all the time. Yeah. Somebody's telling us how yeah, wonderful right. we are and how great we are. It's alive and active. And yeah. I, I used to think, man, I wish I could always hear God speak out loud. I have a friend that'd be like, oh, I heard 
God say? I was like, no, you actually like heard it? They were like, I heard a male voice. I'm like, I've never heard a male voice outside of my husband's or like I've never heard God be like, hello, daughter. And they're like, oh, I want to hear God. And then when you remind yourself, you can That's hear right. God. Right. You can. You can have a, he's having a conversation with us every day through his word because it isn't just some ancient text that was written thousands of years ago. It is alive today, speaking yes, to me, is. informing me, encouraging me, building me up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that oftentimes we look for that in other people mm. um, when in fact we should be looking for it here. Yeah. Yeah. I was and like you know that. how we know that's true? Because it works. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. I was like that yeah. when I was it a works. kid. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was such a mess. <laughs> I think we all were. Oh, yeah, mercy. <laughs> I, think we all were. I mean, when God called me to teach the word, I would sit in my living room floor in short shorts and blow smoke in everybody's face while I, while I taught I the word. That. Short shorts? I, I mean, it was, it was awful. You got a picture? Just I mean, I would, in short shorts? I would go to church and at the, at the, at the break, I would go out in my car and lay down and smoke my cigarettes. I guess, I guess people thought the car was on fire and smoke and no people. But God knew what yes. I would be. Yeah, exactly. Yes. If he would make an investment in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he sees your heart and I loved him. That's right. Yeah. I was yes. a mess. Mm -hmm. But you love Yes. Him. But I loved God. And that I keep pointing to your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it's changed my life. Yes. yes. It's same. It's reality and it'll promises of God are for whosoever will. Yes. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about who we are in Christ, and I just want to tell people this so they can get it. People don't understand that phrase in Christ. Yeah. And it really just means to believe. Yeah. I believe that Jesus died for me. When I believe, I'm considered to be in him. He's in me. Yeah. And so I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm justified in Christ. I'm sanctified in Christ. All these things are, are ours in Christ. And if you want to change how you feel about yourself, yeah. the best thing to do is make your own list or get mine if you want to mm -hmm. and start confessing those things out loud and it'll help renew your mind about who you are. You know, and and I love that. And, and I'll say this, that when we find out who, you know, a lot of people are really messed up in their identity right now. Yes. That are. need yeah, to I'd say so. That need yes. to know who they are. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking into God's word, that will become so clear and God will help you out so much yeah. um, by seeing who you are yeah. in Christ. I love the fact that when we love Christ and we know the truth of His Word, He adjusts our filter. So then we're able to hear yeah. things through the right grid. Right. Right. We're not twisting what was said right. because we have truth yeah. as the basis. Yeah. And I also love that uh, whenever He does reveal ourselves to us and what we should be and He affirms us, Sometimes he has to correct us. Sometimes Absolutely. he puts up a truthful mirror and he says, <laughs> no, you do have some dirt on your face right here. Get the dirt off, but you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Let's get the dirt off right there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's work on this right there. And so Very I good. think, again, when we're talking about discerning the voices that yeah. we're hearing, is it yes. God? Is it yeah. us? Is it the enemy? Is it somebody else? Yeah. Um, it helps us to know, um, you know if it's conviction, mm. it's of God. If it's condemnation, it's not. That's right. If it's what you did was wrong, that's God. If it's you are wrong, it's not. That's good. You know, so being able that's to right. know the difference and then make the right adjustments yes. and then and also surrender. Right. To say, okay, God, I can't clean myself up completely. Beautiful. I need you to do it, you know, and um, and to be able to be changed by his word. And so, so uh, you know, I know people are listening and I don't know everybody's story as we don't either, you know, but God does. And he knows where we need to be affirmed. He knows where we need to be firmed up, you know, <laughs> and he's able to do all the above, you know. And so we're going to pray that the Lord would do in you what is needed in you and that he would show you himself and that in him showing you himself, you'd see yourself better because he's forming you into the image of Christ. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you because you love us and you know us, Lord, and you care about us. We thank you for your love letter to us in your word, Lord. And we thank you that this love letter is alive and is active, Lord, and it works, Lord, and it changes and it transforms and it renews and it gives us the, the sta stability that we need, Lord. And so I pray for my sisters and my brothers who might be watching today, Lord, who are just you know wondering if they're good enough and if they have what it takes and if they measure up, Lord. But I pray that they would find in you that they are more than enough because you are more than enough, sir. 
And Lord, I pray that in those areas where you are convicting them, Lord, that you would do the work in them and that they would allow you to do that work in them, Lord, knowing that you still love them, you still have a great plan for them, and that you're gonna work everything that they've gone through and everything that they're going through together for their good, Lord. So Lord, again, we love you. We thank you that you're able to take our broken pieces, our stories, our messed upness, Lord, and you're able to uh, use it to help somebody else. And so again, Lord, we surrender these things to you. We thank you, Lord, we praise you, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.